In this problem, we're told a large cruise ship of mass 6.5 times 10 to the 7 kilograms has a speed of 12 meters per second at some instant. What is the ship's kinetic energy at this time? How much work is required to stop it? And what is the magnitude of the constant force required to stop it as it undergoes a displacement of 2.5 kilometers? So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So I went ahead and drew what's going on, right? So we have this ship, and we know it's going to travel at 12 meters per second, and this is its mass, right? So that's essentially what's going on. And so let's just start with A. So for A, we're trying to find the ship's kinetic energy at this time. So the formula for kinetic energy, right, is 1 half mv squared, right? So we can solve for the kinetic energy at this time if we know its mass, right, which we do, and we know its velocity at this time, which is 12, right? So all we have to do is just plug it in and we can solve. So it's going to be 1 half times 6.5 times 10 to the 7 multiplied by the velocity, which is 12, squared, right? So the kinetic energy, if you go ahead and do this, Right, so plug this in your calculator, 0. 0.5 times 6.5 times 10 to the 7, and then multiply that by 12 squared. So when you do this, you're going to get a pretty big number, but it's essentially just going to be 4.6 times 10 to, the, 10 to the 9 joules. So this right here is going to be the kinetic energy at this time, right? So this right here is your answer to A. So this is A. Let's move on to B now. So B, you can just think through it, right? So how much work is required to stop it? So think about how this works, right? So we know work, right? You should know that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So if we can find the change in kinetic energy required to stop it, right? How much kinetic energy is required to stop it? Then essentially, right, that's going to be equal to the work. Right? But think about how this works. At this time, this is going to be the kinetic energy. And then at the some point, right, required to stop it, it's going to be, right, let's say it's right here, right? So this is our ship. What's its velocity going to be? Its velocity is going to be equal to zero meters per second, right? Because when it stopped, it's not moving, right? And so what's its kinetic energy at this point, right? Its kinetic energy at this point is equal to zero, right? Because it's just one half times its mass, which is this, right? But then its velocity is zero, and zero squared multiplied by all this is zero. So if we calculate the change in kinetic energy, right? Because the kinetic energy at this point is zero, and it goes from 4.68 times 10 to the 9 joules to zero, the change in it is going to be negative and then just this number, right? because it has to lose that much to go to zero, right? Because when it's not moving, its velocity is zero, meaning the kinetic energy is zero. So we need to take away this much if we want um, the kinetic energy to equal zero. And the work is equal to the change in it, so that means the work is just equal to this, right? So minus 4.68 times 10 to the 9 joules, right? That's your answer to B. Let's move on to C now. So C is going to be, what is the magnitude of the constant force required to stop it as it undergoes displacement of 2.5 kilometers? So now it's going to go 2.5 cam, right? And so we're trying to calculate um, the magnitude of the constant force required to stop it, right? So uh, we know the work, right? So work equals force times distance times the cosine of theta, right? And so we know the work. The work is going to be, to stop it, right, 4.68 times 10 to the 9 joules, right? It's going to be equal to the force, right, which is what we're solving for, times the distance it's going to undergo, which is 2.5 kilometers, but we need it in meters. So 2.5, uh, there's 1,000, right, 1,000 meters per kilometer. So you just, 2.5 times 1,000 is 2,500. So 2,500 meters per kilometer. And then multiply by the cosine of theta. So theta is basically the angle between where the force is being applied and the direction it's going. So if you imagine our ship, right? The force is being applied this way, but it's going to slow down this way, right? It's going this way. So that means, right, if you imagine it like a number line, force is being applied this way to stop it, right? Because it's trying to travel this way. And then it's, but it's traveling this direction. Meaning the angle between them is just this whole thing, right? Which is 180 degrees. And we know the cosine, right, theta is 180, so the cosine of 180 is just minus 1, right? So it's minus uh, 1 right here. So if you want to solve for this, this is just going to become minus 2,500. I'm just moving the minus onto it. Dividing by minus 2,500, right? And so if you do that, you're going to get the force is equal to, and then you just want to go ahead and plug this in your calculator, right? So plugging it in, so I'm just going to do the full thing. So 4.68 times 10 to the 9, right? And then divide that by 2,500, essentially, because the minus signs cancel. So when you do this, you're going to get 1872000, right? So this is 1,872,000, right? And what I'm going to do is just round to, uh, right, 18700, just make everything zeros, and then put it in scientific notation. So 1.87 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So times 10 to the 6th, and then force is measured in newtons. So 1.87 times 10 to the 6 newtons, that's going to be the work, right? 
or sorry, the force, um, the constant force required to stop it, right? So this is your answer to C, right? This was your answer to B, and then this was your answer to A. And so yeah, these are your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.